Page 10, Speak Softly Love. This is a love theme from the movie The Godfather. Very famous melody. And it's a love song. So we got to make it sound like a love song. We're still in the key of F major. You think? No. Surprise. Now we're in the key of D minor. It's the relative minor to F major. Still got one flat. So right hand, lots of eighth notes. And it's slowly, so it works out. One and. Watch this fingering at the beginning. It starts with two, three. So you got the thumb here, and you're going to get this a lot, so use the same fingering. Two, three, one. One and, two and, three and, four and, one and. Just connect them. And then the last line. You can't connect all of these, can, but you can when, uh, when you go from the 1 3 to the 3 5, leave the thumb down and come over. Just connect that. And the, the pedal will help, but do this with the fingers and then at the end. And I recommend, yeah, their fingering is good because then you can use the 2 on the C sharp. Because you're going to hold the G and A down. And there's a fermata there. We'll hang on to that a little longer. And then we lift up and begin the piece. Because all that was introduction. Watch this fingering. Fourth finger on the D. It's the melody we want. that. You might not be able to connect the lower note, but connect that melody with the fingers. And bring out the melody if you can. Again, the end of the second line. Now here, it's a different fingering, so watch it. At the beginning of the third line, here. And now you're coming down. And they want fifth finger on the half note G, so you come in. So this is okay. Because you're going to hold that down while you play the B flat C. Then you can lift up when you do the D. Lift up. Now, you can't hang on to the E with the hand, so you're going to have to rely on the pedal because you hear. And then go on down and catch the eighth notes. Same thing here in the last line on page 10. Just release the D so you can catch the eighth notes. The pedal will hang on to it for you. Second measure of the last line. One five. One five and then two five. And then four. And then the, in the last measure, it's an F and a D. And then you lift up and move. Again, it's 5-4-5. Five, five. Because it's at the top of page 11. Now here you can hold the C down. You, got, you can reach him. And this is tricky, but it's important you be able to do this. The first two measures at the top of the page, you're here, and then the, these thirds. Follow their fingering, and then come across. And I hold the thumb down and come across. It's sort of my anchor point so I can tell where I'm at, because eventually you'll be able to do this without looking at the keyboard. You have to look at first. And then as you're playing that, you can't hang on to the F, but go ahead and hang on to the A if you can. They want you to play the next measure, the half note, with a 1 and substitute a 4. You have to do it quickly because you need to hold that down while you play the eighth notes. I find that a little awkward. I mean, it's a slow piece, but that's a finger substitution you got to do very, very fast. So, what you can do if you want, play the last eighth note in the second measure with a thumb. 
and then cross over and play the G with the fourth finger. And that way you don't have to do a finger substitution. So the second measure going into the third measure there, you're here. Is what I would recommend. And then going on. They want a thumb on the next line, on the half note thumb, because that's now you're in position for the chord. Don't have to. You can play it third and still play the chord. That's all fermata. Hang on to that for a little bit. Then it goes on. Follow their fingering. It's fine until you get to the end of the line there on these chords. On the chords, I'm recommending you do a one. 2-4 on the F-A-D and then a 2-4-5 on the next chord. It's just an extended position chord. I'm not moving. And then move for the last chord to a 2-4-5 there. You're going from here to here if you can. Don't use the thumb there because you need the thumb on the next note. So it's here. The last measure is here. So just, that's what I recommend. There's other fingers you can use and you can experiment if you want. I'm just trying not to have to move the hands around anymore and I have to. And if I do this, I'm moving the hand every time. You don't need to do that. Then the third line down here. It's a stretch, but see if you can stretch between the fourth finger and the third finger. If you can. Otherwise, you got to play G E with one four instead of one five, and then you can bring the fifth finger down for the D, and then you got room. And then the sixteenth notes, one E and a two E and a. I recommend a four on the B flat. It's a chord. No fingering is fine. Fourth line down, second measure. Here. One five. Now I recommend a one three for the C sharp A. And then a one four for the E uh, C sharp. And then a two five for the half note. It's the melody I want to hear. That's what I'm, I'm just trying to finger it legato if I can. Then in the last line, that second measure, this thing you got here, you, you, it would be a 2-5 on the whole note. And you can't hold it down for the full measure because you've got to play these 16th notes. So the pedal will do it for you. And then you reach up. 15 MA means two octaves. 8 is one octave, 15 is two. You would think, now wait a minute. 8 is 1, then 16 ought to be 2. And in some books, they'll say 16. But if you actually count the interval, it's a 15th. It's, 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 so, 15th would be, it's, the note is marked here. An 8 of BA is here. 15 is here. If your keyboard's big enough. If it's not, you could just go up as high as you can. So it's here. It's 4, 3, 2, 1. Four three two one. Four three two one. It's the same chord in each octave, and and that's a standard fingering for that chord. You might have a little break in the sound as you come if you're not accustomed to to connecting that. But the pedal's down, so it's going to do it for you. And then the last chord, I recommend a two five here. And it's rolled with the left hand. Let's cover the left hand since we're there. At the beginning on page 10, two voices again. The bottom voice is a whole note. She's so holding it down in this wonderful 18. The other voice is the eighth note tied to the other note. So you play them both. Hold up. You can't hold the 
last measure there, the first line, you can't hold that down a full four counts. So you're just going to hold it down as best you can, and then move up, and then here. Then after that reverse repeat sign, it's not two voices anymore, it's just one voice. You roll it. Your hand does not have to reach that full span on these. Nice if it can, but doesn't have to, because you're going to roll your hand up. So once you play that, I can collapse the hand and just try and reach this. Next one. So I'm, I'm moving the hand up a little bit. Don't do a lot of this. This is an unnatural, uncomfortable feeling, but you have to a little bit. It's, it's more like this kind of a roll. Kind of a this way. And then the last measure, second line. Third line. Last measure, we're back to two voices again. Try and hold it down. You can't totally, but the idea is there's two voices. One voice plays that and the other voices play these. So hold it down as best you can until you have to let go. Fourth line, same thing. Now here, you gotta let go. You gotta move, because these notes, that's a chord, and you need this fingering for it, so you just gotta let go. And the pedal will hang on to it for you. Second measure, last line, that's an A. Three one, another A. This could be a five one, and then back down. The fingering is fine. Top of page 11, broken chords again. Just watch the accidentals. The last measure of the first line, watch the fingering. Fourth finger on the last E flat. And then top, uh, or the first measure of the second line, that's an A again. Our old friend the A, it's just octaves. Then come up. And then this chord, A, E, G. And this is rolled with the right hand. So all of these notes, one note at a time. And how fast you roll it, this is something you figure out after you get to know the piece and you're getting into the interpretation. Uh, how fast or whatever. I don't know, just roll it. And moving on, this takes it down to the third line. Second measure, we have these. Sixteenth notes. This is sort of like a rolled chord, but it's in rhythm. See, the other rolled chord, that's not in rhythm. You just roll it. Whatever. This is in rhythm. One E and a, two E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three. It ends on three. One E and a, two E and a, one E. And hold down on the D. And then lift the D up when you play the B flat. So that's a little tricky because you have a break in the phrase in the right hand, but the left hand's staying down. Well, and then it comes up. And then the last major left hand, their fingering is 5 3 2 for the G B flat C sharp, and then 2 3 1. For the B flat C sharp E, and then next measure, I recommend a five four two, and then a four two one. This the whole thing is one chord, and that's. A, and then you've had the rest of that before, and then the last line, we're here. I recommend their fingering that works, but I prefer this one. One five two one, then a four three. Two, one, two, and then roll. Yeah, you're here, actually. So it's there. You got enough moving around in the right hand to think about. So if we can cut out some of this moving around in the left hand, I'm all for it. And this does that. I moved right there. I'm not moving again until I get to the end of it. So, 
If you find another fingering you prefer, you go, go ahead and do it. But that last line, take it slow. Yeah. Now, this is a gentle piece. It's a love piece. It never gets really loud. Sort us off for the first couple of measures. medium loud, which is not much louder than medium soft, and you, there's a retardando, you're going to slow down. And then you hold on to that for a bit, lift up so we get silence, and then you go on. And that medium soft is a melody, everything else is redundant. So it's gentle, it's soft. You have a little crescendo at the end of the page. So you're coming in to the top of page 11 is a little louder. Not a lot louder, a little louder. There's some awkward movements in here. The pedal will help smooth it out, but go really, really, really slow until you're comfortable with all these hand movements going on. Toward the end of the first line, on the first page there's a retardando, you're going to slow down. It's sort of like they're thinking, they're dreaming about all the wonderful, wonderful times they're having or going to have or something. And then they come to their senses and they go on. You're staying down until the fourth line down, going into the first ending. You get a little louder and a little slower. Here. And, da. and then you're back to your all tempo, means resume your tempo again, and you repeat it back to the second line there on page 10, the reverse repeat sign. Then in the last line on page 11, here you're sort of loud, so you're starting this out sort of loud. Now you're going to get demi molto rit. Dim means diminuendo, means get softer. You're going to go down to medium soft there in the last measure. Molto rit means slow down a lot, so it's here. here. Maltzy. Yeah. Now, on top of all that, we got to add the pedal. For the most part, you just pedal it the way they're showing it's fine. It's going to be a little blurry in cases, but in this piece, that's sort of what you want, because it's it's an ethereal effect. It's it's uh, you're in love, yeah, and everything is all smeary and blurry, and when you're in love, yeah. So let it be. So to give you an idea, uh, slowly, at the beginning with the pedal, uh, uh, it's overlapping pedal. Now I'm going to do the hands first and then overlap with the pedal. So, so it's here, at the beginning. Now watch the pedaling changes here. Uh, that cuts out some of the blurriness in the last measure of the first line. with the hands there at the fermata, the first measure of the second line, so we get complete silence before we start the piece. And I'm going to lift the pedal with the right hand at the end of the second line, so I get silence. I want to hear the eighth rest in the right hand. Second measure, third line, I'm going to lift the pedal with the right hand so I hear the eighth rest in the right hand, so it's here. And then in the last measure, I'm lifting the pedal in the last beat. Is all, is it, so the last measure. I'm just clearing out the mushiness so I can 
hear the pickup to the next phrase so I can get mushy again. As a Last measure of page 10, I left the pedal with the right hand so I hear the 8th rest. So here it's all connected because your hands are moving around, it's very awkward, so you got to have the pedal connect the sound. The top of page 11. The second measure, I'm lifting the pedal with the right hand half note, so I hear an eighth rest in the right hand. Here it's down. Now I'm going to lift the pedal with the hand, so we get a little silence before we go on. measure the second line I'm going to lift the pedal with the right hand on the last chord before I play those eighth note pickups I want a little silence between the chord and the heel so I'm lifting the pedal up with the right hand on the chord the left hand has to stay down to the fourth beat so the left hand stays down until I play the D so it's the right hand is controlling what I'm doing with the pedal on that measure Again, the second measure of the third line, the pedal is down. I'm lifting the pedal up with the right hand at the end of that phrase before I play the pickup notes. And the left hand comes up on B4. Here. Now here, it's not between a phrase, we're connecting this, so I'm just lifting the pedal up on B4 in the last measure of the third line. the first measure of the next line I want to hear the, the eighth wrist in the right hand. The first ending I'm lifting the pedal up on the third beat. And then I repeat back over here. For the second ending the pedal just stays down. pedal on the last measure. So. There's all kinds of recordings of this and I sort of almost played it for you so I'm not going to bother with a play with me or demo or whatever. Hopefully you get an idea of what this should sound like by what I just did. Hopefully. So I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions feel free to ask but I'm sure you can find lots of recordings of this piece all over the place might not be this arrangement but you still get an idea again it's important you learn the notes and the rhythms and all the mechanical stuff first and you go slow to make sure you can get all the hands movements and add the our, our, uh, there's not a lot of articulation here it's all pretty much legato add the phrasing add the dynamics and then last but not least add the pedal don't do the pedal until last learn it first and then once you have all the mechanics out of the way then you can start turning it into music and start feeling it that's when the magic happens